And welcome everyone to our main support webinar today. I'm going to just give everyone a minute or two just to get settled down and um, everyone tuned in. And then we will start the webinar formally. So we started about one or two minutes past. If you just bear with us for a few minutes and we'll get everybody settled in. So I'll be back in two ticks. So, hello everyone and welcome to our immune support webinar. My name is Orlo O'Hare and I'm here on behalf of Linwoods. So, and it's a pleasure to host this event today to so many of you who have, are attending and to learn about immune support. Thank you to our speakers. Today we have Dr. Fanula Vernon, who is the clinical director at Blackwater Private Clinic, a doctor with the NHS and also a mum of four. Dr. Fanula has over 16 years experience across a number of specialties and today she will be taking us through what the immune system is and how to look after it. Our second speaker is Honor Nethery, NPD technologist and one of our in-house experts at Linwoods. Honor is part of our fantastic team who created the new immune support product and will be taking us through the ingredients within the blend and the health benefits associated with it. And last, but by no means least, we have Jane McLennan, Northern Ireland's most recognised nutritionist with over 20 years experience. Jane will be welcoming us into her kitchen for a live cook along with two immune supporting recipes and giving us lots of nutritional advice along the way. Linwood's our purpose is to enhance people's health and well-being, helping them to feel great every day by providing sustainable, healthy food. Part of this is around education, which is something we are truly passionate about in Linwoods. Nutrition is vital to supporting your health, including helping to maintain your immune system. As we enter cold and flu season, what better time to learn about what we can do to support our immune system? So now, it's my pleasure to hand over to Dr. Fanula Vernon. Thank you so much, Orla, and thank you to Linwoods for inviting me along today. So we thought we'd touch on some of the questions that you have very kindly sent in, and just to give you a brief overview of immunity and what our body can do in order to help fight infections. So our immune system has a very complex network of organs, cells, and proteins that um, help our body to fight against infection and protect our existing cells. Our immune system, we do give it um, plenty of work to do every day. We, um, your, your immune system has to recognize viruses, bacteria, fungi. It has to recognize exactly what they are and then mount what we call an immune response. So we have two different types of immune systems. We have um, an innate immune system that we were born with. And then we also have an acquired uh, system as well. So um, our immune system has been a huge topic of conversation over the last number of years. We've all been particularly interested in, in um, COVID, immunity, vaccinations, and lots and lots of talking points about 
how some people were affected um, in greater ways, some people uh, seemed to, to be relatively unscathed, and how some people avoided, avoided COVID, for example, altogether. So there's lots and lots of things that we can do um, to protect ourselves, to protect our families, and um, enhance the immune system that we have. So as doctors, we use the NICE guidelines, which is the National Institute for Clinical Excellence. And we use the NICE guidelines for almost every medical condition. And the first two parts of most of the NICE guidelines are um, educating patients about lifestyle, getting moving, getting outside, and diet. And we all know that diet is so important. What we eat is so important. So, I'm like every other doctor in the country, we are certainly advocates for prevention is better than cure. And over the next few minutes, I would like to just touch on some, some of the aspects of that. So when we're eating healthily, and if we are looking at our diets, we're looking at whole foods, we're looking at proteins, we're looking at foods that have amino acids and, and the micronutrients that help to build our immune system. So in terms of our immune system then, there are many conditions that can compromise our immune system. So sometimes if our diet's not so good, um, and I would sometimes say to children in the clinic, if your mommy or daddy put Diet Coke in their car, would it go very well? And normally it gets, gets a bit of a, a laugh and a response, but, but that's a, a good analogy. If we're putting in good food, we're putting in good nutrition, then we'll get a good outcome. Antibiotics is another um, huge factor which we now have more and more clinical evidence to suggest that it can affect our immune system. And while we use antibiotics to treat infections, and while it's life-saving in many, many situations, too many antibiotics for, for things like viruses that, that they clearly don't work for anyway, it's just important that we're all a little bit more aware, and we're certainly turning the tide from that point of view, which is great. Stress can also have a huge impact on our immune system. And I'm sure as we approach the Christmas season, invariably people will say to me, how come when I stop at Christmas, I get cold sores, I get a flu, and certainly our adrenaline, our cortisol hormones that keep us going all year round um, can, can only do so much. And then all of a sudden we fall foul and fall short and we become symptomatic. The other people that find their immune system compromised are patients who are um, maybe on cancer treatments, having chemotherapy or radiotherapy. There are also patients who have um, autoimmune conditions. And an autoimmune condition is where your body doesn't recognize, for example, in, in, in a situation like rheumatoid arthritis, um, in its most simplest term, your body doesn't recognize your thumb joint or your knee joint as your own, it mounts a response and therefore can have can have um, adverse impact on your health and well-being. So we give those patients treatment to dampen down their immune system and then obviously that has an effect on their ability to fight infections. And there's other blood conditions as well, conditions like HIV which adversely affect our uh, immune system. The good news is there's lots of things that we can do about that, lots of very healthy and nutritious things that we can do about that. And certainly I know Jane and Honor are going to touch on these aspects um, later on in the webinar. But certainly our diet, our good food, our good nutrition, our pulses and our proteins. There's micronutrients and um, Honor will touch on these later in the immune um, uh, compounds within the, the Linwood brand that we as doctors are huge advocates for and you can get them in your whole foods but sometimes it's not always practical to, to cook um, and to get all of our nutrition into the one area. It's also hugely complex so I'm sure many of you like me would stand in the pharmacies, stand in the health food shops and read the back of the packages just to see what's in it. Thankfully Honor and the team at Linwood have created these products for us for convenience to be able to get these micronutrients into our diets and improve our immune system. So selenium, coenzyme Q10, they protect our cells against cell damage and they're also responsible for helping us make DNA and that can reduce our infection rates. Selenium can also have an impact on our thyroid hormones. Um, and certainly the other question I'm often asked too is, you know, can I have too many vitamins and would it do me harm? And certainly there is medical evidence that, that too many vitamins and too many antioxidants can form a little bit of an imbalance 
um, and therefore there's that small window of opportunity to get it just right and certainly with the team at Linwood have, have the combinations just right. Too much zinc for example can interfere with our copper absorption and that can have a negative effect on our immune system. So it's really important that we understand what we're, what we're treating our bodies with, what we're supplementing our really good, um, our really good diets with. There's increasing evidence as well about the gut microbiome, and it's really interesting, um, really, really interesting science coming out at the moment about how our gut health and good gut health affects our immune system. It can also, there's, they're also putting links to things like MS, conditions like MS. Um, and your gut microbiome is also um, very dependent on the factors such as stress, antibiotic resistance and things. So really, really important. So hopefully that's given you a very brief overview as to what your immune system does. It's really, really important that we protect our immune system. It is our first form of defense. Our immune system is anything from our skin protecting, protecting the layers underneath small hairs in your nose, your nose produces mucus, your chest produces mucus to protect us. So it's really, really important that we protect our immune system and keep ourselves healthy and well. So um, I pass back over to Orla and I'm looking forward to hear the other speakers. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Panula. I have to say that was really, really informative and I've certainly learned a few things out of that. Now, as we move forward, we will now welcome our MPD technologist who is Honor Nethery and Honor, Honor is going to take us through the Linwood's immune support product. So Honor, over to you. Thank you Orla for your introduction and for Dr Vanilla's insight into uh, our immune system. So my role in Linwood's is part of the MPD team and MPD stands for new product development. So essentially our main objective is to research and create new things here at Linwood's HQ. Now, most of our goals involve developing nutritious, sustainable, plant-based products that can enhance people's health and well-being to help them feel great about themselves, but also taste good at the same time. Now, I won't speak too long today. I'll start by giving a brief background to my time here at Linwood so far. And I'll give you a short overview of our seven ingredients that we carefully selected in our immune support product and the reasons behind why we selected them for the plant-based blend. This should give you a bit of an idea of the amount of thought that goes into each and every ingredient that you see on the list of ingredients on the packaging of our products. So I started the role back at the start of the pandemic during the first lockdown in April 2020. If you all cast your minds back to that time, things were quite strange. Our health and the health of the public worldwide was suddenly on the news every day of the week. And thankfully, we have largely come out of the other end. But the experience that we all had through the pandemic really highlighted to everyone, including myself, the importance of looking after our health and well-being. Now, we as a company really cared through the pandemic about the importance of our Linwood's family of customers continuing to nourish their bodies and support their immune system. This is why we created our immune support product that's jam-packed with well-researched ingredients which were all added for their individual properties and then in combination they can give the best support to your immune system. Supporting your immune system is more important than ever now that we're coming into the winter months. We all know it's a prime time to pick up sniffles and coughs because of the colder weather as it allows unwanted bacteria to travel between us. So a great way to support your immune system during these colder months is to add our immune support product to your daily diet. A well-balanced immune system depends on what we refer to as a healthy gut microbiome, which is the bacteria and other microbes in our gut, and Dr. Vanilla mentioned this already. Now, the immune support product has the added benefits of containing the natural bioculture, which helps to feed that good bacteria I referred to, and which helps support the digestive health and immune function. So what other ingredients have we got going into this product? It has milled sprouted flaxseed, and flaxseed is high in omega-3, which is an essential fatty acid that plays a role in reducing inflammation. Now that's really important in an immune product like this because 
inflammation is a normal immune response caused by bad bacteria. So not only does the immune support promote the good bacteria that we need, but also reduce the effects of the bad bacteria. And a serving of our immune support provides 3.7 grams of omega-3 per 30 gram serving. I mentioned there about sprouted flaxseed, and I suppose that might sound quite strange to sprout the seeds and use sprouted seeds in a product like this. But actually, the benefits of sprouted flaxseed have been widely studied. So sprouted flaxseed actually increases something called the bioaccessibility of nutrients, such as iron. Now, bioaccessibility basically means that helps absorb the nutrient into our bodies. And it has been found that sprouting increases the bioaccessibility of iron by 70%, meaning that iron is a lot more available to the body after it has been digested. Now, iron is another important nutrient to help support the immune system, which is why we added some shelled hemp seeds to the product, as it is a rich source of iron. Now, iron is used to transport oxygen around the body in the hemoglobin or the red stuff in your blood. And if you're lacking in iron, you may feel lethargic, tired, have a lack of energy. And these are often symptoms that we feel when we're starting to get a cold. Now, shelled hemp is a great source of plant protein. Now, protein is a nutrient that we hear advertised on lots of products these days for muscle health. But in terms of our immune system, protein is needed for the production of messengers, which alert the immune system when it's under attack to, to produce white blood cells. Now, vitamin D play an important in producing white blood cells called T cells for your immune system. And I know getting vitamin D, especially here in the UK and Ireland, can be quite difficult due to the weather and the darker, shorter days that we have at the moment, as the main source of vitamin D, as many of you will know, is the sun. In our immune support product, though, we've made sure that you're getting the recommended intake of your vitamin D per serving, 100% of that. So fruit and vegetables are a great source of vitamins and minerals and micronutrients. And mushrooms are a food that have traditionally been considered beneficial for immune function. We have added mushroom powder to the product as it is a great source of vitamin B12. And that's a vitamin that can be quite hard to get from a plant-based diet and is often great at boosting those energy levels and reducing tiredness and fatigue. Vitamin C is a well-known vitamin for maintaining a healthy immune system. And I know when thinking of sources of vitamin C, we often think oranges. However, we have added acerola cherry uh, powder, as, which is another fruit that's naturally high in vitamin C. But it also has other compounds, such as polyphenols, that have antioxidant properties. And last but not least, we've added some Brazil nuts to our mix, and that's not only for the texture and to make it taste good, but they're naturally high in selenium, which again, Dr. Fanula touched on the importance of selenium. So it plays an important role in balancing inflammation, protecting our cells from oxidative stress and building resistance to infections. So we've carefully selected the ingredients to provide a multitude of benefits for your immune system and give it the best support and have the biggest impact to your health. I personally add mine to my overnight oats, which, you, which supports my immune system and makes sure it's at its strongest this winter. So I'd like to thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoy your immune, our immune support product as much as we enjoyed creating it. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Jane will incorporate that now into the cook along. Thank you, Honor. That was a really, really informative talk. And it's really good to get a deep dive into our products here at Linwoods to really understand the benefits. So I really appreciate you taking the time to share your knowledge with us today. So now we head over to Jane McLenahan's kitchen, where she is going to host an immune supporting cook along. So Jane, if you'd like to turn on your camera, we will be taking notes and probably our stomachs will be rumbling as we watch what you're about to pre prepare for us. So over to you. Thank you Orla um, and welcome everyone into my kitchen. It's great to have you here and especially at lunchtime. You might be eating your lunch, you might be thinking about what you're going to have for lunch so hopefully I'll give you a little bit of inspiration and some ideas about how you can 
build your immune system in your own kitchen. So the kind of building blocks of nutrition that you heard both Vanilla and Honor talking about, now we're going to bring it into everyday foods that you've all got. And of course, we're going to, I'm going to show you a couple of recipes where you can use the lovely new Linwood's immune support. So we've got to get cracking on these because we're going to start off with a soup. And I've carefully chosen the ingredients in the soup. So we're going to do a soup and a smoothie with a twist. So wait for the twist. So we're going to do a carrot and ginger soup, and we're going to build in lots of those nutrients that you've heard about. So of course, with any soup, or most soup, we start off with an onion. So any vegetables that belong to the allium family, which would be your onions, your garlic, which is always advocated in terms of immune support. So onion, garlic, leeks, scallions, chives, anything oniony. You know that term superfood? It's always weird and wonderful foods that usually aren't lurking in the bottom of your um, fridge or in your cupboard. Well, onions should have the, um, should be given the privilege of having the title of a superfood because they really are lovely for our immune system. Um, and they're just, we use them all the time, don't we? So let's get our onions on the go. And I'm just gonna soften that in a little bit of olive oil. So you heard Honor talking about polyphenols and you'll get polyphenols and antioxidants in lots of beautiful, colorful fruit and vegetables. Anything that's got a really nice aroma, a really nice color, flavor, you're gonna get those brilliant um, uh, ring-shaped antioxidants in there. They support the health of our good gut flora that Vanilla was talking about as well. So, and you also get them in olive oil. And one of the questions I get asked a lot about olive oil is, you can't cook with olive oil, can you? It used to be, that used to be the recommendation. Now the most recent up to dirt, up to date research is that you can cook with olive oil. It's not gonna get damaged unless, you know when you're cooking and the olive oil goes a bit smoky, you have to open the windows and put the extractor fan on to full blast. That's not so good. But as long as you keep your temperature, you know, you're okay to saute your onions and um, to soften your carrots, that will be fine. So we'll get the onions in there on the go. And then I have got six decent sized carrots. Now, I am not, I've given these carrots a good scrub, but I'm not gonna peel them. And the reason I'm not gonna peel them is because just in the skin of your fruit and your vegetables, you're getting masses of fiber. And actually just under the skin is where we get lots of our minerals. So where possible, keep all of your vegetable or all of your fruit intact. Again, thinking about those gut flora that we heard about, your microbiome, they like, in fact, they love your, um, they love fiber. That's what they thrive and survive on. So if you're thinking immune support, get the fiber into your diet. Also, as much color as you can possibly cram in there. And thinking about the colors of our carrots, carrots contain beta carotene, which is a vitamin A precursor. And vitamin A is super important for our respiratory tract. So other orange vegetables, things like butternut squash, sweet potato, other orange things, oranges, um, peppers, orange peppers, get those orange colored fruits and veggies into your diet as much as you can. Um, so color is super important. Respiratory tract, we want that orange colored stuff in there. So that's our carrots on the go. So I can hear those onions sizzling away. Not sizzling, softening, hopefully. Not over sizzling. Um, right, so the next thing I'm gonna do just sure it's not sticking. So that's looking good and smelling really nice. So let's get these carrots in. Remember it was six decent sized carrots. Skin on. And I'll just let that soften while in the background, if you're doing this at home, you get the kettle on and you make your stock. Like all good webinars, here's one I prepared earlier. So I've got my, got about 
the recipe I've given you says a thousand or a, says a liter of stock. I've got 800 here and we'll just see how we go. So I want to get, you heard a lot about protein and how important the Linwood's immune support and flaxseed is for getting protein into our diet. But another way to get protein in, especially at lunchtime, is lentils and beans. So if you're making a soup, always think about getting those pulses in there as well. So in with our red lentils, in with our stock. And if anybody wants to come and do the dishes, you feel free. <laughs> Right, we'll let that do its thing for about, um, we'll check it in about 10 minutes and we'll see how it's going. And basically what we're, what we're going to do here is get those lentils um, cooked up. Normally they take about 15 minutes or so. Um, if you want to make your soup even quicker, you can buy, you know, your cans of lentils, your cans of chickpeas and pop those in for a really fast soup. You could do something like that. So we have thought about how important colour is in our diet. And, you know, we hear a lot. Well, we all know that we should eat at least five portions of fruit and veg a day. And you hear a lot about eating a rainbow. And really, there is so much merit in that of getting colour into your diet from the point of view of your immune system. So those vibrant antioxidants that make up the colours for our fruit and vegetables feed, nourish, and support our immunity. So the next recipe I am going to show you is a, um, a smoothie. Remember I told you that a smoothie with a twist? So when we think about smoothies, very often we're thinking, get the fruit in, maybe we put in some juice, or we put in some milk, maybe some yogurt, but you might not often put vegetables into your smoothie. So our recipe today is a beetroot and raspberry smoothie. And it's just a real, talk about colour, this is a real vibrant one. So let me just get rid of my onion. We don't want the onion in the smoothie. So I'm going to start off with my raspberries. So at this time of the year, there's not many berries in season. We're kind of moving out of that season for autumnal berries. So these are just frozen raspberries, which are fantastic. Frozen fruit is brilliant because it's really economical. Berries are packed full of those antioxidants, polyphenols we were talking about. They're low sugar. And again, a bit like our carrots and our onion, they're kind of an everyday super food. So I have got 150 grams, whoop, maybe 149 grams of raspberries. And they go. So they're going to give it a lovely sweetness, but also because of the seeds in the raspberries, you're going to get a little bit of um, a little bit of zinc in there as well. So get the raspberries in, and then next up, I want my um, my beetroot. Now the beetroot that I am using, don't use raw beetroot for this because your blender will have to work very hard. I'm going to use you know the ones you get in the vacuum pack. So that's what these are and use one, between one and two. So this is for two people. So I'm going to put in one and a half because these are quite chunky, quite big fruits. And then we want something to give it a little bit of sweetness. Again, remembering that this will serve two people. So I've got half a banana here. Natural sweetness, but also some... Um, some nice fiber there as well. Bananas are well known for their potassium levels, aren't they? But, but we always forget about the other nutrients that we've got in here, the fiber, the slow release carbohydrates. And the last thing I'm gonna pop in is just some milk. Now, whatever milk you normally use, it doesn't really matter. So this is almond milk. Oh, you can use oat milk, you can use cow's milk, goat's milk, whatever you use. And the final ingredient, of course, is some of our um, immune support. So just to show you, when you open your pack of immune support, what it looks like. So it's a really, it's, it's quite a nutty sort of flavour. Um, remember that you've got the, the, um, the Brazil nuts in there as well. So I'm going to put in about a tablespoon into this. 
put back in with a pack. And like all Linwood's products, it is better to keep them in the fridge just to preserve the uh, nutrition there. Right, so get the lid on your blender. I hope your blender lead stretches far enough. Yes, I think it does. Look at that color. Isn't it gorgeous? The beetroot just really intensifies the beautiful raspberry pink of your raspberries. And this is actually a really nice um, one to do with kids as well. You can make it as chunky or as smooth as you like. So if you want your, your smoothie to be, you know, almost like, almost like frozen yogurt, then you put a little bit less of your milk into that. Oh, that looks good. So how about that for a wee immune support smoothie? It would make a really great mid-afternoon snack, or you know, you could use this as a as part of a breakfast as well. So cheers, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? You will, of course, get the recipes um, with the link after today's webinar. Right, so my soup, you can see it bubbling away here. Let's see, turn it down slightly, see how we're going for time. Not too bad, so it's looking pretty good. So I am going to add into this soup some ginger, which has got anti-inflammatory properties um, and really lovely at this time of the year. You can add extra things in here. You could pop in some turmeric into this, which is well known as a, a, for support for our immune system. I'm also going to put in some zest and juice of an orange as well, and that'll just intensify the, the gingeriness of our, um, of our ginger. So let's just come back to thinking about the key ingredients that you might have in your kitchen that will help to feed your immune system. So we've talked so much about colour, and that's the first thing I would encourage you to do is eat at least five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. Get those, those vegetables in as much as you possibly can. Um, think about, think about colour, think about variety, and also think about eating with the seasons. So at this time of the year, we've got onions and carrots and cabbages and broccoli and so much in season, um, despite it being, you know, coming into the early, early stage of winter. The second thing that I would encourage you to do if you're really thinking about how you might feed your immune system is, of course, get your immune support in through your Linwood's flax seeds. As Honor has already told us, this is packed with things like your vitamin D, your vitamin C. There's really special ingredients in this that will make a, a, a really important contribution to your immune system. And there's so many different ways of using it. So Honor said about popping it into her overnight oats. You can add it onto your, um, into your porridge. You can put it in your soups. You can put it in your smoothies, as we've seen. But the other thing that I do with lots of my clients is try and get them to think not just about breakfast, but maybe about popping it. If you're doing like a really nice winter salad with some of those winter veggies that we talked about, maybe you're doing shredded um, uh, kale. Maybe you've got some grated carrot and a bit of apple in there. I would put walnuts in with that, and why not put a little sprinkle of your immune support on top, just to give it that really nice texture and extra nutrition. And the other, the other place that I think is brilliant for this product is at dinner time. So if you are doing your one pot wonders, I don't know about you, but I'm eating loads of curry at the minute. So if you're doing one pot wonders, you could add a little sprinkle of your immune support into your curry. Um, or into your bolognese or into your stew, your, your chili, anything like that that's kind of really nice, you know, really nice saucy kind of um, food, mix it up. And honestly, if you're trying to support the immune system of someone else that you're cooking for, they won't even know that it's there. So it's a really versatile product and it's, you can pop it in more places than just your, your breakfast. So we've thought about colour, we've thought about um, flax seeds. The third thing I would encourage you to do is get spicy. Get those spices in wherever you can. Herbs and spices, we're going to use ginger today. Up your garlic intake. There's really nice research to show that um, more garlic in our diet can help to shorten the duration of 
coughs, colds and flus, so get it in there. Um, also, of course, turmeric, which we hear so much about, but look at the other herbs and spices, things like cayenne, things like paprika, and ordinary, everyday local herbs like parsley. Rosemary has got really interesting properties, including antiviral properties. So bring that into your cooking, maybe in your, in your soups, your stews, your roasted veggies, bring more, more herbs and spices in. Fourth thing that I would encourage you to do is don't forget about your hydration. You know, you might be pretty good at drinking your litre and a half, two litres of water during the day in the summertime when it's a bit warmer, but if you find it really hard in the winter time, then every time you go and put the kettle on, fill your mug with just about half your mug of water or even just a third or a couple of mouthfuls and sip your water while you're waiting for the kettle to boil. There's our timer. So keep really well hydrated. Another trick is to have a really nice bottle in the fridge, fill it with water and bring it out and set it on the table at lunchtime if you're working from home, but definitely at dinner time and just get into the habit of having some water with your meals. Slowly, 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 it makes a difference. Another way to get hydrated that brings in the spices as well would be to look at some different herbal teas. You can get lovely ginger, turmeric, all sorts of really lovely um, herbal teas that are specific and supportive for this time of year. And of course, think protein. We've heard about the importance of protein for our white blood cells and for supporting our immune system. And just as a reminder, where do you get protein in your diet? It doesn't necessarily have to be animal-based protein, although that is a, a complete form of protein. So it doesn't have to be eggs, meat, fish, chicken, and dairy products. They tend to be the ones we think about, but it could also be incorporating more plant-based protein, like lentils in your soup, your flaxseed in your smoothies, or in your overnight oats, for example. It might be things like um, adding more hummus to your diet, or, or eating a wee bit more quinoa rather than brown rice, because that's got a little bit more protein as well. So think about where you can add a little extra pop of protein into your day. So let us just see how we're getting on with this. It's, can you smell it in your kitchen? <laughs> it's smelling good. Right. I think that looks quite nice. And it's looking like those lentils are cooked. So they've probably been on there. Not quite 15 minutes, but almost. So we'll turn it off. And then we need to get these extra ingredients in here. So our extra ingredients, first of all, is our, um, our ginger. So I've just got a teaspoon. And all I'm going to do is just cut the very end of that, actually. And then take a little bit of the peel of the skin back just with a teaspoon. And ginger is also very nice to put into, you know, as I said about being well hydrated. It's also quite nice just to infuse ginger and a little slice of lemon in some hot water. I know lots of people who put it into a flask and sip it throughout the day and that's gorgeous, especially if you've got a wee bit of a, a sore throat, you could put a little honey in there as well, which is quite soothing. Right, now let's get our ginger on the go. Just break that wee bit off that I've peeled. So you want, you know, about, we always talk about a thumb-sized piece of ginger, don't we? So that's probably about, what, three centimetres, about an inch, I think, isn't that more or less? Somebody that's better at metric and, <laughs> and maths than I am will be able to correct me on that one. So the ginger will really intensify the flavour of this. Well, I must tell you a secret about this recipe. I stole this recipe from my mum. <laughs> she used to make this all the time in the 1980s when we were kids and it was our favourite. And I've changed it ever so slightly in that. I just put lentils in it as well um, because I want the extra protein in there. So thank you very much, Mum, if you're watching. <laughs> um, and it's on, you will get the recipe uh, sent out to you, of course. So you can try this at home. And it's just, it's everyday ingredients, like I was saying. You know, when you're really thinking about feeding your immune system, it does not have to be that you're going out and buying things that sound strange or that maybe you're not used to eating. It really is the everyday stuff. 
that makes all the difference. And it's also the habits that you build in every day that make the difference. And that is why a lot of um, my clients would say, actually, I had, I had an email yesterday with this. I had a client yesterday, she said, yes, I'm, I mean, we were talking about flaxseed for something else. And she said, yes, I am taking that flaxseed you told me about, but I'm only taking it once a week. You need to bring these foods in every day, and especially your flaxseed, especially at this time of the year. You want to get that immune support in every day to give you that kind of slow, steady, nice kind of balanced in, in, intake of all the, the beautiful nutrients, the, the anti-inflammatory fats and the protein and the vitamin C and the vitamin D and all the others, the zinc and the selenium. Right, next up, I'm going to put some orange zest so obviously when you buy your um your citrus fruit when you come home from the supermarket and you're laden down with all these heavy bags don't just throw your oranges straight into the fruit bowl give them a rinse underneath the tap and it means that you don't have to do it when you're cooking but also if you can try and get unwaxed citrus fruit the zest of citrus fruit does have nutritional properties and again, I'm going back to talking about those antioxidants again, because they're super important and they support the, the health of our gut flora and our microbiome, um, which we've got our, one of our cultures and the immune support. But they also help, the antioxidants also help protect our cells and manage inflammation, balance inflammation in the body. We do need some inflammation, but not too much. We want it to be a balanced response a normal um, and important response to our immune system as long as it is balanced okay now i'm going to put a little bit of juice into this and then i'm also going to this would never happen on saturday kitchen but i need a wee bit of extra water in this too <laughs> this is what you get with live webinars right let me give that a wee squeeze of the orange juice And I'm going to get my tablet. Put that extra, extra dash of water in there. Okay. So all right. Before that, is, let me just tell you something about the health and safety. This is an induction hub and it cools down really quickly. So it is now cool because I've had that off for a little while. So I'm going to lift this in behind me. Okay. <laughs> and get my other blender. I don't know about you, but I have got a lot of blenders in my kitchen. Uh, whoops. I'm very depressed. Okay. So. Get my soup on the go. You can do this with a hand blender. Absolutely. That would do the trick. But I'm just going to do it with my jig blender. I hope it doesn't all. Hope it actually switches on. Hang on, might help if I turn it on. Look at the colour of that, isn't it? Just gorgeous. So we need a wee bowl for our lovely soup. And look at that, that is really feel good soup. Really nice immune support soup. Now, with your immune support um, product, what I quite like to do, because it just looks really pretty against the, the orange of your soup, is get a little spoonful and give it a wee, give it a wee flourish on the top. Mm, that looks good enough to eat. Let me, show you. Let me show you what it looks like then. So hang on, see if I can. Why oh, can't change the camera on this one? There you go. There is your. Can you see that brother? 
there is your lovely, gorgeous immune support, healthy, nourishing carrot and ginger soup. So if you set your, set your day up with a bowl of this for your lunch, you can freeze it, you could make enough to do you over a couple of days. And then you, of course you've got your, your really nice beetroot smoothie. So between these two, you have got lots of the really key ingredients from some everyday foods that you probably have in your own kitchen. So I am going to pass back to Orla and uh, let me see what I'm, hi Orla. Hello Jane, thank you so much. I have to say my stomach is rumbling. That no, does look absolutely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> for the afternoon. But one of my takeaways, and I will never peel a vegetable again, I will definitely just chop, wash them, chop them up, and put them in. It sounds great. But also topping your soup there with a wee bit of that immune support or any of the little, it does, it looks really delicious. So, really good top tip. Thanks so much for taking us all into your kitchen and sharing all of that like such tempting information with us and um, super duper thank you thank you Lynn. so now we are heading towards the end of our webinar we have a couple of questions so we're bringing in a q a session so i'd like to invite all of our panelists to come ahead turn on your cameras thank you dr fanula <clears throat> um, unmute yourself and we've had some questions submitted by some of our attendees today so I'll just get stuck straight in. The first question is from Nicole, and it is primarily for Jane, but if any of our other pan panelists would like to share some of their thoughts or top tips, please do. So this question is, how best to look after yourself in times of extreme stress and on a tight budget? I think this is a brilliant question, Nicole, so thank you very much. I think we're all sort of feeling at this time of the year, it's such a busy time of the year, um, and we're all trying to look at ways that we can really, you know, not spend a little less, but still be really healthy. So the first thing that I would say is make sure that you plan. Don't buy food that you're going to end up chucking into the compost bin. So get planning three or four days ahead and work out what meals you could make that you could cook once, eat twice. So it means that you have much less food waste, you're going to um, eat what you buy and also think about the protein in your plate because generally the protein in our plate is um, what is the most expensive bit. So our meat, our fish, our chicken. Could you balance that out maybe by having one or two meat-free meals a week? Maybe a chickpea curry, for example, a lentil dal, really great at this time of year. And also where you can bring the, the linwood seeds in as well, just to be sprinkled on top. So there's so many ways. So pulses really do make a difference to, in terms of your nutritional support, but they're really, really economical. I would also say eat things that are in season because they're going to be better value than things that have grown halfway across the world. And also they're going to be more nourishing, but pack your freezer with things like, you know, we use the frozen berries for the smoothie. Frozen vegetables have come a long way from just sweet corn and peas. So check out the frozen vegetable aisle for things like butternut squash and sweet potato and loads of really great vegetables where, again, you're reducing your food waste. It can be much more economical and just as nutritious, if not more so. The other thing I would say just about in terms of stress is definitely that idea around cook once, eat twice. Take the load off yourself. Think about how you can make your, make, use your time really wisely but also that you are not skipping meals because if we skip meals our blood sugar levels drop and then we release more adrenaline so just making sure that you're eating at regular intervals you've got that protein in there from whatever source you want it to come from and that will keep you sustained and help support your little adrenal glands which are under a lot of pressure um so hopefully that will help nicole just give you a wee pointer in the right direction jane great advice there really really helpful um Personally, even myself, you know, there's a few notes I'll definitely be trying to include in our diet at home. Moving on then to the second question um, from Katrina, and it is, I suppose, again, directed to Fanula, Dr. Fanula this time. So, Dr. Fanula, I would like advice on how to support a compromised immune system. Hey, Katrina. So, yeah, it's quite it's quite difficult to support a compromised immune system, and it does depend on why your 
um, immune system is compromised. So you might, Katrina, be be one of those patients that we talked about earlier um, in, the, in the webinar where you might be having some cancer treatment and your immunocompromised position might be a temporary thing or you might be on medication to dampen your immune system. So there's a number of things that you can do to support your immune system. The first thing is, is, a, very practical, is a very practical one um, and certainly that we have all had an increased awareness of over COVID where if if your friends, relatives are coming to visit and they have head colds or temperatures and things, young kids with shingles or chicken pox, then you're going to, to keep those people at an arm's length. As Jane and Anna have said, it's, it's eating a really, really good diet, good protein, getting your immune system, getting your ear linwood products into the diet. Um, certainly the, the science has all been done. The recommended daily allowance for your vitamins, your micronutrients, or all of the, all of the um, at the back of the product so the, the science has certainly been done for you there um and so avoiding avoiding situations where you might find that um you are a little bit more compromised we've seen lots and lots of evidence of reduced viruses and respiratory infections when we wore masks over the pandemic so that might be something that you might want to also consider continuing to do, continuing to do as we currently do in the health service we're still wearing our masks for work Thank you so much, Kanela. That's really interesting. Um, and I hope Katrina gets some um, strong advice out of that. So now question for Honor, and this is from Max. So Max has, Max has asked, can you advise on any vegan, plant-based or gluten-free products? So Jane might have some thoughts on this too, but we'll start with you, Honor. Yeah, so I suppose um, Jane has touched on a few options. Um, and invertedly without saying that that's what they are, but lentils, chickpeas, your fruit and vegetables and your nuts and seeds are all great ways to include those in your diets if you're vegan, plant-based and gluten-free. Um, you can have gluten-free oats and um, just make sure to read the label and ensure that they are. Uh, our full Linwoods range are all vegan, plant-based and gluten-free, um, all certified. So if you have a look at your back of your label it will usually indicate there are a range of ready meals as well there's more and more um, items sort of coming out just again check the label on the back. Jane I'm not sure if you would like to come in there with any thoughts also. Yeah just a wee reminder that so gluten is found in lots of grains so it's found in things like wheat and barley and oats is on our set and you can get really good gluten-free oats um, which some people can tolerate some people can't if they're gluten-free but look at other grains as well look at things like um, quinoa and don't forget about rice about brown rice because you've got fiber there it's slow release energy and if you're buying gluten-free products if you're on a gluten-free diet yes absolutely 100 percent but try and look out for things that have got more fiber because very often those gluten-free products are really low in fiber so you can get brilliant things like chickpea pasta pea pasta lentil pasta that's a really nice way of getting additional protein in but also more fiber as well so there's as honor said there's so many really good options and it's kind of looking at getting the healthy version of the options i guess Brilliant, Jane, thank you. And then we have one more question. Um, I suppose this is really for Honor again. It's from Maureen. And this question is, do you need to take a 30 gram serving of immune support all at once? No, so a 30 gram serving looks like, I suppose, two dessert spoonfuls. So say you could have one dessert spoonful with your breakfast, and then after you've meal prepped, as Jane has already spoke about, you could have the second dessert spoonful on the likes of your curry and then that means you can have it throughout the day because two dessert spoonfuls might seem like a lot for some people um but yeah you can have it in the morning you can have it in some in the evening and just spread it out through the day like that you'll still get the same benefits from the 30 grams thanks honor thank you well look unfortunately really i'm mindful of time and we haven't got um, able to get through all of the questions that have been submitted today. Now I thank everybody who has submitted questions and over the next few days we'll try and address those questions via our social media channels so please keep an eye out on our Facebook and our Instagram page. I would also like to extend a special thanks today to our speakers or our panelists Dr Fanula, Honor and Jane for joining us, taking the time and speaking to us and sharing their knowledge I also want to thank our tech partner, Digital24, for assisting us to bring this webinar to you. 
and I hope everyone has taken away something helpful. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone for registering and attending today. I certainly have taken a lot away and I hope you have also. So <clears throat> if you're on our Linwood social media pages, we've got a fantastic competition on for, of an immune support package, which is actually worth over £250. The competition is still live until the 30th of November, so please check out our Facebook and our Instagram pages to be in with a chance of winning that fantastic prize. Later today, we'll also be sending you an email which you'll receive, um, which will include Jane's recipes um, and also top tips on your immunity this winter. We'll also be sending out a recording of this webinar and we'll also have a 20% discount for anyone who wishes to purchase from our website, the immune support products. So unfortunately, we have no webinar planned in December. However, we'll be back in January with a bang. We've got some really big plans on for January, so please keep an eye out on our social media pages again, and we'll be coming to you with some top tips and nutritional advice. So really at this point, I'd like to say um, thank you again. Have a great afternoon, and also um, maybe a great Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year. Feels a bit early to wish people a, good, a happy Christmas, but we'll go for it. And anyway, thank you so much. And um, that brings us to the end. So cheerio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.